if you had to categorize the root causes of most collisions today into a small number of broad categories, I think you come down with these two. Most collisions are either the result of a, uh, a poor lookout or when there is a good lookout, taking inappropriate avoiding action. If we have a look at poor lookout, I think people forget, um, and perhaps during the training process, there's not enough emphasis on rule five, and the three-stage process which the rules provide for avoiding collisions. And these are rules five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, it's a three-stage process. You have to detect and plot, that is observe the approach of the other vessel. You have to appraise the situation and the risk of collision, and then you're supposed to take timely and avoiding action, positive avoiding action. And in order to do those, uh, to make a proper appraisal and to give yourself sufficient time, you need to be proceeding at an appropriate speed. Sadly today, notwithstanding all the increased navigational aids, I fear there is A, a reluctance to slow down, and B, an inability to properly appraise the situation. The key to an uh, early appraisal uh, and making a proper appraisal is early detection. And we have AIS now, and uh, the radar horizon has always been greater than the visible horizon, but people are not using the equipment. Early detection, as Mr. Sheen said, as long ago as uh, 1989, uh, gives you a greater chance of making a proper appraisal. Uh, all available means, of course, as uh, the Court of Appeal said way back in 1973, involves the intelligent interpretation of the data. And uh, a full appraisal requires an understanding, sadly, of three things which are not, for obvious reasons, defined in the collision regulations, because they're impossible to define in a myriad of circumstances, is what is a safe passing distance, and what does constitute risk of collision, and what constitutes a close quarter situation. Too many mariners, I think, consider risk of collision to mean risk of actual contact, and I'm happy that if there's a two cable passing distance, that's not risk of collision. But a safe passing distance in clear visibility, as a matter of English law, anything less than five meters, uh, five cables is gonna leave you in, in trouble in court. And probably a mile or more in good visibility and open waters, and in restricted visibility, you can double that. As a matter of English law, risk of collision exists and can exist when there is a possibility of a collision. So it doesn't mean that there will be actual contact if neither vessel does anything. So anything which is, if the vessels are not passing, going to pass at a safe distance, they are going to be at risk of collision. A close quarters situation is a little bit more complicated, um, but the rules, the, the reported cases suggest that vessels should be taking action at, uh, at, as a giveaway vessel in open waters at least 12 minutes or so before collision. So if you've got to within a TCPA of 12 minutes in open waters, I would suggest you have a close quarters situation. This is not a collision case, and Captain Canal may recognize it. It's actually a grounding case, but to give you an idea of the in, reliance that mariners today place on um, electronic aids and forget about the use of the naked eye. This is navigating through the Singapore Strait using the GPS. Unfortunately, it wasn't set on the WGS 84 datum and notwithstanding repeated warnings from VTIS that the vessel was outside the lane, the mariner every time he got the warning rechecked his position using uh, the GPS no cross-referencing, and didn't seem too surprised when he altered course when the light which he managed to run aground on was almost right in front of him instead of passing clear down his starboard side. Right. All at the end of the day, bad lookout, poor lookout, not making a proper appraisal of the situation. Inappropriate avoiding action, 
Again, I think during the teaching process, there's not enough emphasis perhaps put on the wordings of Rule 8A in particular. Uh, avoiding action should be positive, made in ample time and with the observance of good seamanship. Positive means an alteration of course or speed, and usually it's course, which is large enough to be readily apparent. Too many mariners using their ARPA in trial maneuver mode work on what's the minimum alteration I need to increase the CPA by a couple of cables. All right, as a matter of English law, the courts are expecting alterations of at least 30 degrees or more in restrictive visibility. And whilst alterations, of course, are much more readily apparent today with ARPA, anything less than 20 degrees is probably not going to be sufficient. It's certainly arguably not sufficient from a visual perspective. But people today are still making the, the minimum necessary alteration. Ample time is one that is taken in sufficient time to avoid a close quarters situation and results in the vessels passing at a safe distance. Understanding what is a close quarters situation, as I said, is part of the problem, I think, today with, with the appraisal process. But if you accept that you should be, take, as the giveaway vessel, taking action with a TCPA of 12 minutes, ample time means you're taking action at least 12 minutes before collision. Right, too many mariners today, I think, still think in terms of distance. They delay taking avoiding action until the vessel, the other vessel is, say, two miles away. But if your approach speed is 40 knots, you've just given yourself only three minutes to get out of the way. Good seamanship. The tendency today as well, too many mariners, I think, rely on the VHF for collision avoidance. It's positively discouraged, and we all know that. There's numerous M notices to that effect. Uh, but it still happens today. And there's no, there are circumstances when the use of the VHF is appropriate. Uh, and as um, has been said, the courts rarely hear of circumstances where the VHF has worked to advantage. But too many mariners today use the VHF to, to discuss a method of passing which is not in accordance with the collision regulations. And um, by way of illustration, this was a master's incident report of a ship going through a busy traffic area um, where it appeared that every ship that he met, he discussed the method of passing. Total reliance on the VHF to get out of the way. Right, I'm, so th at the end of the day, uh, I do feel that um, uh, we have a lot, perhaps, to, um, to learn from our predecessors when we didn't have all the navigational aids and there was a big notice on, uh, on the bridge of my ship when I went to sea which said, constant vigilance is the price of safe navigation. Uh, and I think uh, we have lots of useful aids now, but uh, people are not using them correctly and uh, they're not making proper and full appraisals uh, uh, and understanding, I think, that what, what constitutes, uh, as I say, a safe passing distance, risk of collision and a close quarters situation. Thank you. <laughs>